What about eyebrows? Today we're talking about fucked up wonder years with Gundams that come out of your head. Face robots. Fully coolie dream thing! Fully coolie. Otherwise known as FLCL or Furry Curry. It's important that we do this for review because this is part of your new school anime, which is your new anime classic. This thing is so amazing. The animation quality is fantastic and the story is bonkers, but it's great. If you don't appreciate anime, you're not going to have as much fun watching FLCL. It's only six episodes long. It doesn't feel long. It just feels like if I wasn't an expert, I would be hitting my head against something. If you're not a huge fan of anime, you're going to miss out on some really, really good punches at their own genre, as well as some great inside jokes if you know what you're looking for. There's this whole reference to Lupin the Third that uh, obviously if you're a super nerd like me, you understand and recognize it immediately. That's Lupin the Third! Otherwise he's just some jackass jumping into this chick's legs with a red jacket and a blue tie. The art style is in like a minimalistic fashion. A lot of your backgrounds are three quarters complete. They'll just leave the paint half on the page and then all your bushes and all the buildings and stuff that are over here just trail off into white. But it doesn't matter because you're not looking there. You're looking over here where the character is. You know, all that intricate shit that's right here where you're supposed to fucking look. That's right, you're not looking over here. So that's why they didn't make it. So basically, FLCL is like the Wonder Years, only if evil space robots were coming out of Fred Savage's head. You've got Nauta, he's your main 12-year-old protagonist. The kid is like super deep and extremely emo. He is like the definition of emo. He says these, these really dark, deep thoughts. He's all, every day spent here is like an eternity dying slowly. He's like one sentence away from flinging himself off of a tall building. It's mainly about him growing up. He's going from, from pre-teen to teenager, and it's just mostly about how he deals with space robots coming out of his brain, which is a very mature subject. Space. You're introduced to Haruko. She's... She's your crazy alien chick, and she shows up on this yellow Vespa, and she hits Nauta in the face with this space base, and now all of a sudden, shit's coming out of his brain. She just shows up, revs it up, it has like a pull string, she's all, guitar! Alien chick plus space base times hit in the head equals space portal? Nauta's been hanging around with his brother's ex-girlfriend, this chick named Samajima Mamimi. She's kind of just using Nauta as a filler for his brother. His brother went off to America to become a baseball star, and now she's stuck with Nauta, who she kind of likes. He reminds her of his brother, but at the same time, she's just kind of using him, and she knows it's not going to go anywhere, so she just kind of sucks on his neck, makes him hold her panties, and then leaves him there. Now to Takun. He's all pissed off living in his brother's shadow. He kind of has feelings for Mamimi, but he kind of knows that it's not going to go anywhere. So he's just being with you sucks. Uh, you stupid bitch. Why don't you like me? It's about Nauta. Nauta's 12. Alien shows up. Hits Nauta in the head. Portal opens in Nauta's head. Robots come out of Nauta's head. She needs Nauta's head to be open so she can get her space lover back from the giant iron on the hill. Run now. <laughs> you meet Commander Amaral in episode 4, and he's this guy who he looks like me if I was running around in Japan. He's got freaking seaweed wrap right here on his eyes. Seriously, what? Apparently seaweed keeps portals closed, so you can't open a portal in his head. There's Adamsk? Adamsk? Adamersk? Adamsk? Adamsk, I'm pretty sure I'm saying his name right. He's the Pirate King, and he's got so much N.O. that he can steal an entire star. And that's pretty much all we know about him, except we've heard that Haruko and Adamsk 
are like lovers. But that's from someone else's point of view. When Haruko talks about it, she's talking about how I need to get this guy back so I can eat him. She wants to eat him. That's not cool. You want a bitch. It's not the same as boning him. She wants to bone him like fuck him over, not fuck him. You got Conti, he's one of your invading space robots, but after Haruko hits him in the back of the head, he becomes like a blue pacifist. Because he starts off all red, and then when Naota gets tingly in his funny parts, all of a sudden, Conti turns red and is a badass again. So something's going on between Conti and Naota's junk. There's a baseball episode, episode four. The episode as a whole, especially from someone who's not like a super big baseball fan. I mean, yeah, baseball. Go Giants. But it's not that big of a... I'm not like, yeah, baseball! Woo! The episode is really good. It's got great music. It, it has this great scene where, where she pulls the space base out of his dome. And the classic nosebleed goes on all the girls, right? Which is the opposite of how it goes. That's another inside joke. The experience as a whole is really good. And it's a really fun ride. Like I said, there's only six episodes. So it's not a very long series. It's more like a mini series. But they wrap up all the questions that they... Well, they kind of wrap up all the questions that they give you. They don't answer all of them. But... They also don't answer them in the manga either, so it doesn't really matter if you're still asking questions. And we're not talking about the manga, we're just talking about the anime, which is awesome. There's two manga scenes in the series, one at the very beginning of the series and one at the very end. The first and last episodes have these two manga scenes. All of a sudden the animation stops and they go manga form. They just kind of have them being still and going... Eh. So there's two manga scenes, and if you know anything about FLCO, you know there was no manga first. Hey look, we got these from the manga. No you didn't, you made shit up because you're geniuses. The thing I really like about Haruko is she's the only character who's actually honest. Naota lies to himself, all the other characters are either lying to themselves or lying to other people. Haruko tells the truth. The truth is is fantastic and unbelievable, but she tells the truth. He says, who are you? She says, I'm an alien. That's the truth. He doesn't believe it because why would you believe she's an alien? She's just some crazy bitch on a yellow Vespa. If I was to describe this as a genre, I would have to go with fantasy drama, sci-fi, Gundam, comedy, action, drama, sports, one episode anyway. An inappropriate love story. Wildly inappropriate considering he's 12 and she's three question marks. You really can't put a pin in this one. Scenes I enjoyed. Where do I start? The entire series is enjoyable start to finish. Even if you don't know what's going on and they purposefully make it so you don't know what's going on. Right? They, they purposefully try to confuse you and leave questions unanswered. Which is fine because that's his point of view. He doesn't know what's going on so why should you? Before you start watching FLCL, you should have at least, at least... I would say 50 hours of anime under your belt. And they should be of different things. Don't just sit there and say, well, I watched all of Dragon Ball Z, that's enough. No, it's not, because that's just Dragon Ball Z. Watching Dragon Ball Z to prepare for FLCL is like watching Sesame Street to get ready to watch Requiem for a Dream. You don't watch Twilight to get ready for Citizen Kane. I feel this is a great, great anime viewing experience. Everyone should take this ride. It's only six episodes. It's not that long of a ride. Yeah, it's really intense. You're gonna, you better strap your ass in because it's an intense ass ride. But you're going to enjoy it. Even if you don't understand what the fuck is going on. <laughs> Watch it again. That's what I did. I watched it like three times in a row. And it still doesn't make total sense, but I don't care. No, there's nothing I don't like about FLCL. The animation is top quality. The music is amazing. They have this band named The Pillows, and they pretty much do all the music. And it fits every single scene it's in. The CD's awesome. They have like at least two or three soundtracks by now. So you should get at least one of them. I'm just saying, check out The Pillows. The Pillows. This is a great viewing experience. You should own it. Go and get it. Watch it. Acquire it and enjoy the shit out of it. 
This has been Any View by Dave. I, of course, am Dave. If you have any questions, comments, or confusions, or suggestions, put them below and I will get back to you. See you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, goddammit, or I will hunt you down in my yellow Vespa that flies. Hunting down someone who left a snarky comment on the page. <laughs> yellow Vespa that flies! What are you gonna do? Get revenge! This super awesome double guitar at the end. Where do I get that motherfucker? That thing is fucking badass. He doesn't give it to her. She takes it from him. He's all, bottom feeder, cleaning lady, stupid maid. And she doesn't answer him. And he whispers, he whispers, evil lady. She turns around immediately. Yes? What a fucking bitch. They show scenes of Haruko talking to the cat, but you, you know she's talking to the cat, but they never actually show you her talking to the cat. You get to see her get her ass kicked in silhouette by the cat, who she is, I'm assuming, talking to. She's sitting there talking to the room. She's like, no, I haven't gotten this done. I recruited an enemy robot, but he seems to be worthless. And all of a sudden, this cat shadow goes, bah, bah, bah. what's up with the cat? Is the cat a phone? Is the cat an alien? Are all cats aliens? Are all cats alien phones? What's going on? Is she talking into the cat's butt? I don't know. They don't answer this. But seriously, whenever you see her and the cat, the cat's always not facing her like she's talking into his ass. It's not an iPhone. It's an ass phone. <laughs> ass phone. Haruko says she's 19, but the little question mark when it comes to her age is there's a little blur, but it gives her her age, and it's just a question mark, so nobody knows. She says she's 19. In the second episode, where it gives all the characters names in Japanese and their age, and Haruko has three question marks where her age should go, so that means she's possibly hundreds of years old, because she's an alien. How is this 12-year-old getting, like, all this action around him, that he doesn't even know what to do with it. He's got, he's got Samaji Mamamimi, he's got the class rep, he's got Nina Mori, who's kind of like a really smart bitch, and now he's got Haruko, who's deliberately screwing with his feelings to get the portal, to get the, the space boner? She wants the space boner. No, this is space boner. This is choker corn. The DVDs come with bloopers, and they're hilarious. You get to see the guy trying to say Adamesque. He's all, Adam, I didn't do it right, because I know how to say his name. So it's Adamesque. But he's all, Adamska. Adamska. That's hard to say. What's up with the iron? Like, I know what it's for, but no, seriously, if I was, like, living in this town, what's up with the iron? It, it's an iron. It's a giant iron on a hill. Why would you live near a giant iron on a hill? I don't know about you guys, but I know what irons do. They get really hot and they run shit over.